I'm taking this whaler pump out. I have to go to Monroe today to get the registration and I'm going to try to stop at West Marine to get either a new pump or a rebuild kit. So these two short, these, these two kind of wood screws came out of the bottom. But I'm taking this out and this looks like it's a machine screw that's part of the mounting. <clears throat> looks like it actually goes into the body of the pump itself so it may actually be holding the pump on I mean that I don't see any other mountings on here for the pump so I think you know the pump may actually be held on by like some of these screws some of these screws on the outside so I better make sure that it doesn't fall off but I wanted to just record how this goes back together because I need to put it back together. Uh, I hope with either a rebuild kit that would be preferable because I don't want to. I don't think I need to buy a new one because the body of the pump looks fine. I think it's this diaphragm that's shot. So this is a whole different thing. This is a machine screw out of this one. And this is also a machine screw. <clears throat> Whereas the wood screws go down here. To repeat myself, okay, wow. So I may just take the whole pump with me to a West Marine and either either in Sandusky or Toledo. Okay. Let's see here. So yeah, I, I took out the bottom two machine screws and now you can see how the how the body of the pump is kind of loose. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay, so that, that that's becoming undone. So this is going to be disconnected. I mean, maybe I can just take the whole pump with me. Now, yeah, now see, this is not the, this is not the, this is just a shroud. This is just a shroud. I don't think it even really has to seal. It's this that's the thing that's not working. But it all seems to be together. Somehow it's still sucking air, so. All right. So there's the, there's the whaler pump. Uh, let's see, this is the discharge here. And this is the intake. So why is this thing just sucking air? self-priming open okay so I can open this up so there it is and this is the end with the pump I'm gonna put the machine screws back in here and yeah and then it, here's the arrow that points to the discharge so the little arrow indicates that this is the discharge end all right <clears throat> all right so I just put the gasket back on there what's left of it and those other four screws are just what goes in the top and the bottom and these two screws go here and here so there's something kind of rattling around in here that doesn't sound too good and there's some screws here but I'm just gonna take this with me I'm gonna find a West Marine again in, in Toledo maybe since I'm going through there anyway, and uh, take it in there and say, hey, I either need a rebuild for this or I need a replacement. So, and I guess I'll be paying, <clears throat> I guess I'll be paying retail because I really need to get this thing 
I really need to have, you know, this is where the handle goes, right? Take the handle out of here. All right, because this is where the handle, this is where we keep the handle, because it's got to be handy, handily. Right, okay, because this is where the handle goes. You pump it. This is what I was trying to pump before that was to no avail. So, yeah, and there's something yeah, rattling around inside this thing, so. All right, off to West Marine. So, West Marine. Uh, so I, I stopped at West Marine on the way back from the Michigan from the Monroe, Michigan Secretary of State's office where I got the boat registered. I got the registration and the sticker and the title is on its way to my permanent address, which is somewhat inconvenient, but I don't think I need the title itself as long as I got the registration on board. Uh, that's for another episode, but I thought I'd mention it since I stopped at West Marine on the way back because it's in Sandusky. At least the one I stopped at because it was on the way back from Michigan. And uh, to see if they had a, 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 a rebuild kit for this pump, and they did not. So, and I had tried calling them like three times, and I couldn't get anyone to answer. And she said, well, our phone and everything is down. So, computers are down, phone's down. So, but they were still able to ring me up. For some other purchases I made so so this thing is shot and this is just kind of like a little uh, skirt to keep the water out of the mechanism so you can see here how this corresponds to the explodey diagram right there's the explodey diagram here's the pump itself so, I'm going to sort of start off by unscrewing that. And then here's the diaphragm on the inside, you know, the, the handle. You know, the handle moves the diaphragm up and down with this mechanism, but it has no suction, or it has suction. I mean, I can, I can hear air going into it, but, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to take this thing apart. Oh, okay, so you got that. Let's see, where's that gasket? It's supposed to be a gasket, I guess. Oh, it's in here. Okay, well, the gasket's in there, so that little gasket there is in here, so. So I'm going to take this apart and see what the issue is, because something's rattling around in there, and it's just, that just, just doesn't sound right. And I think, yeah, the valve, ah, well, so we'll just see. Okay. I think I think all these screws should be identical. Uh, be that way. Right. And I don't think I have this gator kit. So, because it's a, I mean, you can you can set this up different ways. I do want to get this bilge pump working before I start to seriously sail the boat. I want to have a, you got to have a way, you know, to get water out of the bilge without requiring electrical power. 
and 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 if if need be, even if the electric bilge pump is working, you've got some you've got a lot of water coming, and you want to have that, and you want to have this, you know, going at the same time. It's, I mean, there can be times when you there's you need to get a lot of water out of a boat because that is the difference between the boat <laughs> sinking or not. Now, that would be a bad day. It's also just a good idea to do this just to know. Alright, well here's here's that piece. Okay, and then this piece goes on top of it. Diaphragm pumps are a really old technology. I guess this bolt, this nut comes off of here. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hmm. Ah. Ha ha. Okay, so there's there's just a pivot in here. Oh. So here's it's rattling around. thing <laughs> this thing broke into little pieces look at that it's like a little puzzle I got here There's a piece missing. Maybe it got ejected because there's nothing more rattling around in here. Hmm. Okay. That's kind of strange. There's got to be another couple pieces missing off of this that maybe little tiny pieces that got ejected. Oh wait! Gah ha ha ha! No? No? No, that's an actual... Okay, this is the outlet valve. No, okay, that's just that's just the outlet valve. It's like this triple kind of action little valve here. This is the this is the inlet. So it's a flapper valve so that when there's pressure inside here it, it forces it closed. So that when the there, there's pressure in here when the diaphragm is contracting, when the space in here is contracting, and then it forces things out the outlet valve. See that? That's the outlet valve and so the outlet valve kind of close. It's not a flapper, but it's kind of like a. It's almost like a heart valve. That kind of. It, it. When there's more pressure inside, it, it. The water can flow up, but if there's pressure outside, it doesn't flow in. So it's a little bit different than the flapper valve. But the flapper valve here looks good. But you can take it out. It looks like. Oh, but here I can take the. And take the outlet valve out. There we go. Hmm. 
Uh, yeah, because I was thinking there was some junk in the outlet valve. There would be uh, other little pieces of this, but there's those must have gotten those must have gotten ejected. Maybe they're in the maybe they're still in the outlet pipe. But there's no point in getting them unless it would. Well, I mean, I guess they could be obstructing the pipe, but maybe not. I think they might have just gotten ejected altogether because that's a pretty big pipe going out through the sea chest. So if they got out that way, they're gone. On the bottom of Lake Erie. But I have to replace. I have to replace this anyway. This is the cause of the problem. Although I'm not. It's not clear to me yet exactly what that does but it's part of the diaphragm plate and pivot arm kit so <laughs> well here I'm just kind of come on boy this pump is probably 30 years old. I mean, a lot of the stuff on this boat is original. And a lot of it still works, but... Well, I'm sure the pumps, I'm sure the bilge pump and the, you know, the plumbing back there has been replaced. I'm sure it's got an, I'm sure the pressure pump and stuff have been replaced, but... Uh, this, this old... And this is this is really called a whaler pump, even though it says Henderson on it. Whoa! There's one screw gone. And put the screws over here for the outlet valve. Yes, another viral video from Ahoy Skylark. Okay, so this is ah okay so this pipe is part of the and there's one more screw here that's not two more screws that haven't quite aren't quite loose enough yet there we go that is the outlet valve oh the screws are different lengths huh oh the two oh okay because the the two top screws go into here and get the other one and it tried to hide under the laptop oh no get away i can't get away i can't get away okay so yeah the the, sh the short screws go in up here and the long screws go down here because they have to go through this part to hold on the outlet. And I think it looks like you can put this in any way you want. It looks like it's it looks like it has rotational symmetry, right? You can put it in yeah that way. I'm guessing. I didn't I didn't I didn't notice like if there was any particular orientation. I don't think it really matters. So anyway, there it is. Oh, this is still, there's still this flapper valve, which I think is just, yeah, okay, that just comes out like that. Okay, and then this arrow indicates the outlet valve, so that that's how you know that this valve goes in this side and the flapper goes in over here, and, and also the flapper's got a little fitting for it. So there's, there's the, uh, there's the diaphragm pump all in pieces. I'll clean that up. And I need this. I need the, uh, I need the diaphragm plate. And that's the problem. 
AS0561. Actually, maybe just get that from West Marine. Uh, and I guess I might as well just replace the, the no okay so the diagram the diaphragm is still good oh wait there's one more thing to take off here okay there's a little there's two little clips so I guess this plate went against here and the air maybe yeah okay okay so the air is escaping ah, okay so the plate I think I get it now the plate presses up against the diaphragm because the because it was just this was just flapping around and there's not an airtight connect there's not an airtight seal here so that was the issue because this this is this has got to be all super airtight in order for it to create a vacuum to pull water up that up the up the tube up that scungy tube, which I should probably maybe clean up this weekend. All right. So, I don't know, I guess I'll eventually take this off, but I think I'll leave it together for now. Yeah. Okay, so I think the diaphragm kit is what I need. Thank you very much. So here it is the next morning, and uh, I've had a good night's sleep, and uh, and I and I and I came and I and I cleaned up the pump. I put it in the sink and scrubbed the different pieces of it. So here's kind of I kind of put it back together without all the screws and everything. This is how it's assembled, and I had a misapprehension <laughs> about it. Uh, I was thinking that the water f flowed under here and like why is the mechanism you know why is the mechanism inside the diaphragm well the water actually flows over the diaphragm the water flows I put it back together you can see this is the intake so here's there's a flapper valve so when you so when you pull up on the on the le on the handle and pulling up on the handle it makes the diaphragm expand and so that creates a vacuum and the water comes in through this flapper valve you see the you can see the flapper valve there even though everything's black on black you can see the water flow in right right because because normally this is on top of it right so it's all sealed and there's a gasket there that so this is all nice and should be all nice and airtight watertight right and then when you push down on it um, the pressure forces the flapper valve closed and it forces water out that little valve which has got a different design it looks it looks kind of like a heart valve it just kind of opens due to pressure and it will resist water flowing back in through it so so the mechanism is underneath the diaphragm right the rocker arm see that rocker arm there and so that's what moves it and so you got to pivot here through the body of the pump and then this is actually this is actually called the gator g-a-i-t-e-r the gator and that's what goes around that you know that that hole there where the pump was and of course this is the broken part that was that's supposed to go underneath here so that it compresses that seal so that you don't get any so it keeps the air and the water from flowing between you know through this is because this is a weak point in the design this because this goes through, and again, if I could take, oh. yeah, so you have to take this little clip off, and this little clip off, You could then you could take the whole diaphragm off. Okay. So, given that, I 
this just goes like that. This is all like made out of, you know, the plastic parts. I guess it's nylon. It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong, but not so strong that that didn't happen. You know, I'm thinking they should make these plates out of like, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. You know, and the, and the rocker arm. You know, maybe make those out of, oh, say, marine grade stainless steel? Or at least uh, cast aluminum or something? Metal? Because that's a weak point, and if this happens in a situation where I gotta pump like hell to keep the boat afloat, um, that's gonna make a, I think I, I already mentioned, make a bad day worse. So, so this is a this is actually you know except for the materials this is a very sensible design right and the fact that and, and this is designed so that you can take it off by hand so if something does obstruct if something gets sucked in there that's like like say blocking the outlet valve then you can unscrew this to get in there and take it out right good idea now the problem is with the installation because it's starting to rain or it was raining so I closed up the companionway and, and I also had the presence of mind to open it up so I didn't bang my head trying to go out of the companionway so there needs to be there needs to be like some kind of a access thing here like like there is here for for the emergency tiller right should be able to unscrew that and reach in and take off that plate as it is now i'd have to open up the lazarette and reach in blind to unscrew it to try to yeah so if so really this you know i need some kind of a hatch here that i can open to get into the pump and take that lid off to de-obstruct you know to to get whatever piece of junk got in the pump and is blocking the the outlet or preventing the it from oscillating full stroke so Oh look there. There's the sailing camp. So what I really want, you know, I, I can get the whaler rebuild kit eventually, but I really would like for this nut, actually all this stuff, this nut, this plate, this plate, and this bolt assembly and the rocker arm to be made out of metal. The, the body of the pump can still be this nylon. This is very, this is, this is really strong, but it has a different kind of a load. It just has a kind of a compressive load on it. Well, this is, this is where it's mounted. And so there's actually a lot of torquing going on when you're pumping it, but this is still, I think, strong enough. And the, and the and the mounting uh, bolts are stainless steel. They're those long machine bolts that I took out of there. So, with those mods, I'd have a good I'd have a good bilge pump, a good manual bilge pump that will hold up under duress, and that I can have confidence in. Because if I'm trying to keep my boat afloat, if I've got I don't know, a, like a seacock blew out or whatever. Uh, at least on the Great Lakes, I don't need to worry about orcas, you know, knocking off my rudder. Uh, you know, I could at least know that, or have a really, really strong confidence that, you know, like something like this won't happen when I'm, when I'm desperately pumping the bilge. All right. So there you go. That's my gripe.